Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton from ID People. I'm here at Wise Media's sixth EMEA Summit in Abu Dhabi, and I'm joined by Ralph Merkett from Interpol. Ralph, thank you very much for stopping by to talk to me. Uh, you've been presenting today talking about a preferred uh, travel document that would ease the um, cross-border travel of, of specifically your own agents. Tell me how you see that working. Well, I have to say that we are very, very successful with that project. We kicked it off in 2010 in our General Assembly in Qatar with a resolution to our 190 member countries where we asked for their permission to start working not only with Ministry of Interior because that is our main counterpart in our member countries but of course also with the Ministries of Foreign Affairs to reach a special visa status for our officials uh, traveling in the world because of Interpol matters, mm. to supporting our member countries in natural disasters, to identify victims, uh, to fight organized crime, always when invited by the member country. We are okay. not uh, stand alone that we are like James Bond going in a country and doing our own regulations mm -hmm. uh, in a country. We are always coming to help member countries to do their job uh, okay. when they are asking us to support them. Okay, so it's kind of by invitation only, so exactly. it, makes, Absolutely. it makes perfect sense. Yes. And the objective is quite straightforward, and that's to, that's to speed up and uh, simplify the, the process of, of travel for those agents. Exactly. The, the point for us is that we make sure that the police officer is not a normal businessman who can prepare his business over months. Uh, natural disasters and organized crime, you have to come to help immediately. You cannot wait for weeks or months even mm. before you can send the expertise on the ground. Yeah. And that is why Interpol said, composed by more than 90 nationalities only in our headquarter, that we need to bring the knowledge on the ground and not the right nationality mm. only because we can react quickly. For example, me as a German national, I can travel in most of the countries in the world without having a visa. But I'm not an expert in all the topics, so does that mean I go and a country will get me because I can come quickly, or does Instead. a country need the right expertise to help yeah. their own things? Yeah, who, who might be someone with a passport from a country that doesn't find it as easy to, exactly. to travel as perhaps, exactly. perhaps the Europeans do. Yeah, so the, the objective makes com complete sense to me. The, therefore, the, the Interpol travel document or the Interpol passport becomes a very attractive document. So it needs, for that reason, to be a very, very secure document. How do you, how do you tackle that? How do you match those conflicting? Well, it's, it's, it's two things. One side is the document itself. Uh, what needs to fulfill, of course, uh, not only the ICAO standards, mm. it has to fulfill the standards that each country who is willing to recognize is mm. accepting the document on a technical level. But that is only one piece of the medal. There comes also a strong ID management to handle the people and the officials who will hold such an Interpol travel document, what gives the privilege of quick entry um, to not abuse this document for private pe yeah. persons or uh, uh, private reasons or, or um, things that are not really linked to uh, the work issue. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's why we had on the one side together with the private sector, especially Entrust and Morpho, we have developed okay. a, a document that uh, is unique in the world. Mm -hmm. We are the first ones who have a 3D photo in a passport. Right. What is, um, might sound very simple, but this is a straightforward um, visible security feature for a border police officer in a country where we don't have all this e-gate mm. and, 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 and all this fancy tools already in there. A border police officer needs to verify quickly if a document is genuine mm. or falsified. And such uh, things are helping, like the 3D photo or a, a, a kinegram or a, a, a laser engraving yeah. to make sure that uh, on the one side we reach the high technical standard, but on the other side we help border police officers to really yeah. easy validate an Interpol travel document yeah. on the ground. Yeah. And interoperability is always the key to success with, with these kind of projects where you're exactly. deploying in so many countries. Interpol must be very used to actually bringing all those, having 190 members, state members, bringing them together. But how does that work in terms of technology? Because as you say, they all have different, different levels of technology at the border in terms of being able to read it. How do you, how do you make that? Well, we have 
we have to adapt to each of our member countries. For the recognition and implementation, it's fairly easy and straightforward. A country decides to accept the Interpol travel documents in conjunction with the national passport because Interpol cannot say Ralf Market is Ralf Market. Only Germany can say that as I'm a German citizen. But Interpol can say, yes, he is working on Interpol police matters yeah. and traveling. So it goes together. The implementation is together with IATA mm. so that all the systems are implemented in borders and on airlines. Yeah. Mainly we're talking here about airlines so that the system is up and running smoothly. And then, of course, you have to populate and send all the information to all the border points so that they know what this exotic yeah. document is yeah. about. And yeah. of sure, it's an exotic document yeah. at the end of the day because we don't talk about maybe in the middle, long line, about 5,000 officers mm. in the world who will hold such a document. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's fairly small yeah, yeah. and privileged group, if I want to say that. And in terms of the where you are in the project, how far through are you? When do you expect to deploy documents? <laughs> well, um, as you can understand, countries are fairly different. Some countries can make decisions uh, because of their national legislations mm. relatively quick. Um, other countries have a huge process to run, even with parliamentary legislation yeah. changes to accept the Interpol travel document uh, as a valid travel document or in conjunction with the national passport. We have since 2010, when we kicked off the project until today, 57 countries who okay. have already recognized the Interpol travel document. Um, we have strong support by various regional bodies towards the Interpol travel document, what we also have ensured. We have passed all the EU uh, layers to, uh, to achieve uh, support by the European mm. Union, but still it's decision of EU member countries itself on a national level to decide what visa status, mm. if any, they give to the Interpol travel document. But I would say in three years, uh, 57 countries so far, we are quite good and we expect for the 100 years of Interpol next year in Monaco when we have ah, okay. our General Assembly, we're one of the oldest international yeah. organizations that uh, we can also announce 100 countries yeah. recognize the Interpol travel document. Okay. What would be, in my opinion, a really, really yeah. good way forward. Yeah, and it's a really good milestone. I just wanted to divert off onto another topic because some of the work Interpol do, I think, is not particularly well known. We were talking off camera about, about sports and, and the uh, issues that are, are, are rocking sport in terms of um, gaming and, and illegal activity around there. You were saying that Interpol is actually involved in some training and some education yes. uh, in that area. I'm, I'm not the expert. We have no. a specialized department now. Uh, we work very closely together with FIFA as uh, we recognized a while ago that uh, illegal sports betting uh, is harming society. Um, me as German, I love football. Mm. Uh, I think it's pretty it's obvious. Genes, yeah. uh, some sort of. Well, we didn't want since a while, but yeah. it's, it's part of, the, of our genes. So, but it would be useless and meaningless for me mm. if I would sit in front of TV when I have the feeling that the result is already done. Mm. So it's really not more about sports. Yeah. And as the, the damage uh, or, the, or the gain that organized crime through illegal betting can make per year is so huge, uh, there is, of course, a big illegal market, mm. apparently, on that. And Interpol has set up um, a partnership uh, where also FIFA is part, but also a lot of other international organizations and sports uh, to develop and create training programs for sports, young sportsmen, uh, for referees, but also for police officers to tackle corruption, mm. understand what is the meaning if they would step yeah, in exactly. such a game, yeah. and to work closely with all other international yeah. bodies together to, um, yeah, to fight that, in my opinion, really, really damaging form yeah. of crime it's yeah. not about sports it's about society it is about society and if we don't you know if we don't trust what we're watching on a Saturday afternoon it becomes it becomes very difficult yeah. doesn't it and if Absolutely. we cannot sit together with a beer and, and watch yeah, our two countries out, play yeah. football and at the end say well the better one yeah. if I cannot say the better one or even say the luckier one yeah then I think we lost all we the lost meaning about lot. about that yeah. that is in my opinion uh, really, really bad. Yeah, and it's more about community than it is about sport. Very, and not very talking important. about the money that organized crime yeah. is making out yeah. of that, what again goes in other form of organized yeah, yeah. crime. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it carries on, doesn't it? And I think, but I think from my point of view, it's important to understand that Interpol is as involved in prevention um, 
as involved in prevention at that early stage yes. as it is in, in fighting crime yes. after it's happened. Yes. Um, so I think that's really fascinating. Ralph, sounds very interesting project. Look forward to um, the announcement around Monaco uh, to, to, to see how you've done with those numbers. We'll be measuring you on that. And, um, well, hopefully we can talk again after that. Thank you. I'm thanking you. Thank you very much.